We have a question from Eli, and Eli asks a good one. With the passing of Louis Simmons, rest in peace, I have been going through and revisiting a lot of West Side material. Louis talked a lot about the original West Side barbell in Culver City, California, run by Bill Peanuts West. Now, there's always been an argument if it's West Side, is it's the West Side of the country, or named after Bill West, being West. Now, Bill West tried anything and everything, and he really, uh, it's his ability to throw caution to the wind that I think really helped the establishment of West Side, but we'll, we'll go on. Louis says he found articles about them in a magazine in the early 1970s, and that's where he picked up box squats, deficit pulls, good mornings, and many other movements. I would just wonder if you're familiar with the original West Side. Yeah, there, in fact, I have. Uh, I can give you three quick stories. I used to work for a company called Bigger, Faster, Stronger. If you look at their videos, um, I do a set of 10 in the Power Clean for video. They only show one of them, but with 315 pounds in the, in the Power Clean. I also uh, jerk 385, 175 behind the neck for five. Uh, I don't know if that video, may, I think it's the, the 365, 165 kilos for five. I think that's the one they put. And uh, Greg Shepard uh, told me that he, he knew and worked with the original uh, group. And if you study Bigger, Faster, Stronger, you'll see that it's a um, homogenized, cleaned up, uh, it's a cleaned up variation of the original West Side. Uh, so it's the towel bench. You know, you put a, back back when we first started lift, we used to roll up towels, but then later we started using those uh, squishy foam. They're, they look like, well, yeah, it's it's what the people, um, you know, it's foam rollers. Yeah, foam rollers can be a, oh, I don't have mine. <clears throat> foam rollers can be a wonderful <laughs> use. Finally, you can do, you can do foam roller bench press. Um, I think Louis came up with the the two by four. So you have the three two by fours, the one two two by fours, the one two by four. Um, so Greg Greg really shared a lot of that with me. Uh, the other big influence with me was a hammer thrower by the name of Pete Gallet, G A L L E with a hyphen on it. And uh, we were sitting at Sports Palace one day, and he just went through the whole box squat program. And he basically told me that the, the most important exercise, the, the answer to that question, if you could only do one thing, was the box squat. And uh, they used uh, two massively different variations of the box squat, according to him. And I, I don't have my notes anymore. Uh, my friend Jay has them, in fact, uh, from Pete, but I don't have them today. Um, uh, he, he would do high box squats and then extremely low box squats. And I don't think, I don't think I've really seen those as much. I think the low box squats disappeared. Finally, of course, you know, the other person I knew, and it wasn't a good relationship with a guy named George Friend, uh, an American hammer thrower. Um, but he, you know, he, you know, he was, uh, he did all that stuff. He did all that stuff. Uh, but, uh, he, yeah, yeah. But Pete was wonderful in explaining all this to me. And, and Greg's program, Bigger, Faster, Stronger, if you look at it, I mean, you'll see the, you'll certainly see uh, West Side adapted for a high school setting. And it's a good program for high schools, you know, if if that's what you're doing. Uh, I think in this day and age, I mean, we have Jim Wendler's 531. I would humbly brag <laughs> that some of my things I've introduced to high schools have worked well. Uh, sadly, most high schools are still crappy bodybuilding programs. Um, but those that do take it seriously, those who do the 531, bigger, faster, stronger, um, they, they seem to have a lot of success. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. I know that uh, Louis really pioneered chains, but Greg came up with a, a thing to do with chains. He put, he sells chains that are collars. And the first time I saw that, I went, that is the most brilliant thing I've seen in the weight room in a hundred years. So in my, if you come to my gym, I just leave the, the squat rack always have chain, always, always has chains on it. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't think I've done a squat without chains. I mean, maybe a goblet squat or overhead squat, but I don't think I've done a squat without chains. And holy cow. That may maybe 30 years. I, I don't power lift, so it doesn't matter. So even when I'm getting ready for a weightlifting meet, um, I, I said this before, I, I just ignore the chains. So 
you know, if I've got 205 on there, I have a lot more weight than that. So, but it's good. It, you know, humbles me out a little bit and gets me going. Uh, the one thing about the West Siders that they're not, they, I mean, they're, they, they have one goal and it is to get you as strong as you possibly can in those big three lifts, uh, bench, squat, deadlift. Uh, my knock on West Side has always been this. When I'm watching a game with a West Sider, and I've done this many times, I always get the elbow, the big elbow. They're big guys, you know. And they say, I'll tell you one thing. If I was their coach, they'd be stronger. And I always respond, yeah, you'd be the strongest. You, you know, you'd be stronger, but would you win? Because that's just because you're the strongest on the, on the field doesn't mean you're going to win. It's an advantage, but never make that straight line across in uh, team sports or the throwing arts. I hope that helped, Eli. Good question. Thank you.